To those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no, the ayes have it. I call on Government Order of the Day number two. Electoral Integrity Amendment Bill, second reading. A point of order, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, I move that the Electoral Integrity Amendment Bill, set down for second reading, be discharged and referred back to the Justice Committee to enable the many amendments proposed by officials and submitters to be considered. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. The noes have it. A party vote is called for. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 56 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 46 votes opposed. New Zealand First. Nine votes opposed. Green Party. Eight votes opposed. <laughs> Act New Zealand. The ayes are 56, the noes are 63. Uh, the, question, the motion is not agreed to. Andrew Little. Okay. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to. Uh, oh, I move that the Electoral Integrity Amendment Bill be now read a second time. Mr. Speaker, it's a great pleasure to take uh, this opening call and the second reading of this piece of legislation because it does a very fundamental thing in our democracy. It affirms the very basic principle of MMP, which is that proportionality of party representation in Parliament is everything. And it means and restores, or at least reaffirms, the point that the electorate, and only the electorate, determines the makeup of Parliament. And as a corollary to that, it further affirms that no individual MP, on a whim, can change the proportionality of representation of parties in Parliament. That is what it does. Now, there's been a lot of scaremongering and comment, uh, commentary, particularly from members opposite, actually really from only one member opposite, and that's uh, Dr Nick Smith. But actually, what he has singularly failed to do, I might say in quite good company, because I have been stunned at those with letters after their name occupying senior academic positions in our universities, every, every single one of them has totally failed to refer to the number of conditions attached to a decision by a party to remove a member from their ranks, or at least to give a notice to the speaker, to give a notice to the member. And so Dr Nick Smith and pretty much all members of the National Party and others who have commented on it have failed, have failed to take into account the provision in the bill that in order for a leader to take any step at all, the leader of the party, the leader of the particular caucus, must have the support of two-thirds of that caucus. That is a major safeguard. So we wouldn't, so we, so we wouldn't be in the position where, for example, you had an MP in your ranks who said, it's time the party, the National Party in that case, did something to show what it stood for and was met with members in his own party moving motions in their caucus to expel him. That was the experience of Morris Williamson. That was members opposite, prepared to expel one of their own members for having the temerity to go public in 2003 and say, it's about time we had a party that knew what it stood for. Well, I might add, 15 years on, we're still waiting. Uh, Morris Williamson's gone, but 15 years on, we're still waiting. Madam Speaker, the reality is this. This bill is important. It's an important signal, an important provision in our sort of electoral law makeup to make sure that when voters vote under our MMP system, and we have a system that goes out to secure the confidence of the voting public, that their decision matters, that their vote counts, that their vote, their collective vote, that determines the makeup of this parliament cannot be changed by an MP who, partway through a parliament, decides on a whim they're going to do something different and distorts the proportionality of parliament. It has happened before, Madam Speaker, in this parliament, and it has happened under comparable legislation to this. And members 
All members in this House will know of the case of, uh, involving Donna Abateti Huata, who abandoned membership of her own party, and that party, the ACT Party, took action. And it went to court to determine whether or not the proportionality of Parliament had been upset. And the Supreme Court, the highest court in our land, determined that proportionality had been upset. And on that basis, she was out. She was out and she was replaced. And that is right. And that is right because when it comes to the voice of the electorate, when it comes to voting systems, the, the, the collective voice of the electorate must stand for something. And it should not be undermined by members in this House who decide on a whim or for whatever other reason they're going to go on a frolic of their own and, and upset the proportionality of Parliament that the electorate has determined. And if they want to do it, because any member is free to do it, and that has happened also in this House, Dame Taniana Turia, a former Labour Party member, <coughs> decided that she could not live with decisions of the, the Labour government at the time, and she left. She left the party and she tested her mandate with her electorate. She wasn't the first, but she was one of the most recent. And she did it. And that is the proper thing to do. And she came back under the banner of a new party with an electoral mandate. And if Michael Woodhouse thinks that that would be somehow prohibited, prohibited in this act, no wonder Nick Smith's in the trouble that he's in. Because if that's the collective understanding of the National Party caucus, they're going to be on that side of the House for a long time. Because it shows to us they cannot read legislation. It shows to us they don't understand the basics of understanding legislation. Because that would not be prevented under this bill. This bill is about reaffirming that very basic principle and that very basic point. But you see, here's the other thing. Here's the real constraint on dodgy political decision making, and that is that politics will still continue. You see, on this side of the House, we're quite happy to tolerate and understand and even sometimes embrace difference. And so in the a couple of parliaments ago, one of our members, Damien O'Connor, standing fiercely up for the rights of his electorate, voted against his own party, the Labour Party at the time, in favour of a government bill to deal with windfall timber from a major storm on the west coast. And he, and he, and he, and he did the political thing, spoke with his party, spoke with his colleagues. His colleagues understood, of course, he had to look after the core interests of his constituency, and it happened. Politics will still happen. Politics, political judgments will still be made. And I compare that, for example, with what we saw in this House just earlier this year, when this House was dealing with the, a private member's or a member's bill on medicinal cannabis, yes. and a couple of members opposite said, no, we're going to vote for it, because we're the young Liberals of the National Party, and we're going to defy our then leader, and we're going to vote for it. And everybody was excited. Look at this, a new invigorated National Party that's doing something that's never done before and had the MPs that are prepared to abandon the whip. And then when it came to the vote, then when it came to the vote, what happened? They all voted the same. Those young Liberal Turks who put their name out there said we're not going to be bound by the old mores of the National Party anymore. They voted with the rest of their dull grey colleagues. Might I add. They did that. And so we take no moral lesson from members opposite when they talk about the great right to, to abandon your, your party whoop, and all the freedom of speech stuff, because they don't do it. And they've never done it, and they're never going to do it. Poor old Morris Williamson was the last one who dared to stick his head above the parapet, and they tried to expel him. Well, on this side of the House, Mr. Speaker, or Madam Speaker, the reason we don't worry about this is because we understand the right of members to disagree and to have a debate and to enjoy the privileges of this party. But one thing this side of the House totally gets is that being in this House is not about being part of an elite. It's not about taking the privilege to the point where we deny the will of the electorate. And what members opposite actually want to do when they oppose this legislation is they want the right to defy the will of the New Zealand electorate. That is the contempt in which they hold voters in this country. Well, voters in this country have been very clear to me 
and to other members on this side of the House, is that they want the right of every voter, when the electorate votes collectively, to have their vote respected. And it is respected when this House accepts that the proportionality of party representation in this House is solely the preserve of the electorate. It is not the right of members in this House to arbitrarily and sometimes capriciously decide they know better, they are bigger and more important, they are part of an elite, and they can defy the will of the electorate. This bill affirms a fundamental principle of MNP. Now, I know we're going to hear, we'll hear, all, we'll hear all sorts of speeches because we know that Dr Smith loves, loves talking about 1930s Germany and accused various government officials of being something pretty close to it. It's pretty despicable on his part. He's a pretty despicable MP at times. But one thing is absolutely clear, and that is what this bill stands for and what this government stands for, and that is the right of the electorate to be respected and the obligation of this House to respect the judgment of the electorate every three years when they decide the makeup of this House and do not give licence to individual MPs to completely subvert it. The question is that the motion be agreed to. I just remind members that all members in this House are honourable members. I Madam call, Speaker. I call the honourable Dr Nick Smith. Freedom of speech, tolerance of dissent and respect for democracy.